we are back at it with part two of Soji Talk episode 113, where we discuss recent K-pop news and events, have a visit from Cousin Harold, and give you the state of the nation. Boom. All right, news and events from last week. The first main topic is K-pop and technology. With the debut of Espa, we noticed that there has been a lot of tech-related K-pop news, so we decided to cover them today. So the first story. At the time of this recording, Eyes One, Monster X, The Boys, Kang Daniel, G Idol, and ATs have all joined the universe. And it also oh. seems that AB6 will be joining them in the next couple of days. Um, mm-hmm. Developed by game company NCSoft, Universe is a new global entertainment platform that allows users to enjoy various fandom activities anytime on mobile and will combine the latest technology with the best entertainment in order to provide never-before-seen content for K-pop fans. One such feature of Universe will allow fans to listen to AI voices of their favorite artists, voice, and they will use voice technology created by NCSoft's speech synthesis technology with the help of the idols themselves universe will be available in korean japanese and english and across 134 countries and i believe that like the pre-sign up is live right now oh my huh okay um First of all, we don't know exactly what this is, right? <laughs> they've been teasing this universe. They've been really like shadow realm about it. Like I don't really know. Why how are to mysterious? Just... Yeah, like Ray Mysterio. They were be- they've been really Ray Mysterio about this whole thing, you know? <laughs> yeah. Um, it's one of two things I think, right? Okay. It is either some kind of hub where they're just going to use weird technology and make these interesting like apps and features, right? Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Or it is going to be a direct competitor to Weavers. Mm. It's one of those two things, I believe. I I'm I can't name it off the top of my head, but do any of the released, like confirmed groups and people on Weavers overlap? I don't think no. so, right? Or do so they? The features they okay. that is listed on their blog right now is mm-hmm. some sort of streaming, mm-hmm. some sort of concert experience. Mm-hmm. Oh. On an offline fandom activity listed into a thing called a collection. And then they have this entire NC speech AI lab yep, uh, that's voice yeah. technology. Um, and it'll apparently support Korean, Japanese, and English. Yes. Uh, shout out yep. to the lack of Chinese uh, language. I don't know why they didn't do that. Oh, that yeah. So from the place, things but... you described, this seems more like a fan cafe with added features. Right, right. right. It feels like a general social media platform where the main topic and the subject is K-pop. So one more thing. Sorry, one more thing, real quick. Apparently, there will be eleven artists at launch. Okay, Mm. that's that's a lot though. So I've been trying to figure out like any common threads because if you look at this lineup, it's kind of weird, right? Eyes one is CJ Babies. We have Starship with Monster X. We have Cracker Entertainment with the Boys. We have Kang Daniel's own thing. We have Cube. Mm. We have ATs with KQ. That's like a really diverse list of artists that aren't yeah. super related, yeah. right? Yeah. Um, the only thing they have related right now is two things. Number one, all of their fan cafes right now are on Daum, which is owned by Kakao. Mm. And number two is that they're artists that are not on Weavers. Yeah. Right? That's literally like the two two things <laughs> they got in common. Mm. Um, mm. I So I made Warren, like we had a big discussion about this earlier today. I initially thought that maybe this was Kakao doing a new um, fan cafe type experience in collaboration with NCSoft. But mm. as far as we can tell right now through Warren's research, it is literally just NCSoft, the video game company. No other collaborators. Right. And which is a little strange to me. To me, it's, I, I definitely see where this feels strange, right? Because obviously K-pop fans are not going to know what NCSoft is. Um, NCSoft they might. They is might. The, they might. They might? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They, yeah. They they're the company behind like a lot of big like the one of the cre- they they made a lot of video games that have Yo, been super shout successful. Out, shout out to Guild Wars. They made that game. Mm. That's the one I was addicted to when I was a kid. No no no. Guild Wars two. Lean, lean, yeah. uh, Lineage. Uh, Blade and Soul. Mm. Ion. Like all of those high quality RPG games have come out of this company, and it's one of the most successful companies to come out of the IT boom in the late nineties. Mm-hmm. A lot of jargon there, right? Obviously. Um. That being said. They seem like they're wanting to expand their portfolio a little bit, you know, expand mm. into different markets. In that aspect, K-pop does feel like a good yeah. market that they might want to jump into, especially because 
they have they already have a lot of international experience, right? Like Ion, mm. Blade and Soul, Guild War that Doug played that you know they they did that in English. Um, I so guess thinking, where yeah. I guess where my confusion was is like. I was thinking, okay, so traditionally, um, fan cafes have been on Daum, right? That's like the mm-hmm. main place they used to be. Obviously, for idols, it's kind of fizzled out a little bit, and that platform yeah. itself is kind of fizzling out because it's yeah. kind of old and over and outdated. And even groups like BTS used to be their fan cafe used to be on Daum before Weverse was existed, so it was like where everyone was essentially in yep. K-pop. Mm-hmm. That's where unless you're an outlier right who had their own like platform, because I know Dreamcatcher had their own fan cafe app that, and now they're moving to Weverse. Um, mm-hmm. I believe, but I thought that potentially this might have been cacao. Like, this is our new app. Let's get everyone who's already on our platform and just move them, right? And mm, pretend it's a new thing. Makes sense. Because for me, I was like, from cacao's perspective, if this is, um, if Universe is just a thing from NCSoft, I'm like, how can I let them go for free, right? Just let them go and lose them, right? That's, I was oh. like, that's, that's why I thought that, um, that cacao might have been related to this. But as far as we know, they're not. They're just letting them walk, right? Interesting. Yeah, I mean, they, that's kind of crazy to me. There's like no reason they can't, right? Like, yeah, not, because there's no contract. Or you it know, seems like, like there's no contract to be on specifically like Daum and have your fan cafe there. There's no like thing. Yeah, it's it, it's the same as like K-pop fans being on Twitter and Reddit, honestly. Yeah, so uh. that's kind of cool because I know that Weverse is um has some like there's some money involved where you could like buy perks or you could buy the watch a concert or you can buy merch so now now we're starting to have these platforms not only be fan cafes but also vessels to make money so if ncsoft let's say they do a similar type of thing you could buy some merch you could buy the online concert buy into some cooler features now we got money now there's probably some kind of contract and deals going on right that's the next level um overall for universe they're establishing a pretty robust and big lineup of big names right if this is as we think where it might be a fan cafe, it is clearly a direct competitor to Weverse, right? Oh, yeah. Right. right. We'll have to see what happens, but I mean, it seems I, I, like this stuff is really booming right now. I think the other platform, other two platforms you also have to think about right now. Mm-hmm. Um, one is VLive, right? Yep. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah streaming, yeah, yeah. concerts on offline fandom activities that's right now that's VLive right now um yeah it seems like naver is doubling down on their relationship with sm so that was another thing i wanted to to point that where it seems like sm's not gonna do we ain't doing either of those things we're gonna do our own thing right so Mm. right right and then also sm has the collab with jyp so it seems like those two beyond live yeah might be together in their own thing right right so it we're and and V Live has there's been multiple reports of V Live wanting to do more things and if you have their app installed you, you can see it being updated very frequently, um and then SM has this other thing called Listen L Y S N I don't know if you guys know about it, uh, um mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that seemed like SM was interested in running a social platform for like for for K-pop fans, and based on what they learned there i think they're gonna move on to doing beyond live and like upgrading mm. free live and stuff like that um so it seems like potentially we're gonna go into this three competitor market we have weavers we have uh v live uh, slash whatever sm neighbor joy p is doing and then this thing called universe universe feels like something that will be the place for people who are falling out of the big hit umbrella as well as the SMJYP umbrella. Uh, so, Woolen, uh, if you're listening, uh, <laughs> please do everything you can to join a BD. Please <laughs> declare for someone, right? Please, <laughs> like, join somebody. Like, do something. Also, also the, the main thing we, we also have to talk about is where is... Why, where, where's YG gonna fall in all this, right? That's, right. That's, oh my gosh. Yes. Right, because they're not in any of these parties right now, so we'll have to see yeah. about that too. Um, overall, though, it really seems like we're moving into a time where we're gonna have very centralized fan hubs, which mm. encompasses both fan interaction, concerts, and merch type things, and maybe subscription plans. That seems like it's the way of the future for K-pop yeah. as a whole. I mean that it's it's the way of entertainment industry in general, right? Like yeah, that the sure. one of the new patterns of this decade is like different platforms, different streaming mm. services, different social media services for different topics and different interests. And it's um, uh, one of those yeah. things like 
they are allowing us to get closer to the idols than ever before. And some of that does come at a cost. So there is a trade off there, right? So mm. that seems yeah. to be like the market strategy overall. Um, Next, we have two mobile game news. So that's okay. technology. So the first one. Music company Superb, which Big Hick acquired last year, has announced Rhythm Hive. Rhythm Hive is a new rhythm game that will feature songs of artists from Big Hit labels, with confirmed songs including BTS's Dynamite and On, as well as TXT's uh, Can't You See Me and Runaway. Rhythm Hive is scheduled to launch in early 2021, with more information uh, being released via the game's social media channels. So, essentially... They're, they're throwing up the deuces to the Superstar series, right? right. Because there used to be um, yeah. Superstar, oh, BTS, yeah. and essentially they're doing a similar thing, I would guess, right? Yeah. But in terms mm. of Superstar series, uh, on November 10th, Dalcomsoft announced that they will be launching Superstar FNC. FNC is home to artists uh, such as FT Island, CM Blue, AOA, N Flying, SF9, Cherry Bullet, and P1 Harmony. Previous version of the Superstar series include SM Town, JYP Nation, Pledis, Starship, G Friend, YG, Eyes One, and the now defunct Superstar BTS, and then Woolim, right? I think there's one as well. Yeah, I don't know why you didn't put that mm. one here, sir. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so it seems that a uh, big hit is like, hey, um, we're probably losing out on some potential profits with this mobile rhythm game thing that people are addicted to because it's kind of gotcha. It's like the K-pop version of Genshin Impact a little bit that I'm going to do. <laughs> um, but they're like, if we just do it in-house, we could probably make more money, right? right, right. <laughs> mm. And now that we have all these artists, there's probably enough content for someone to be happy just using ours, right? Yeah, I, I think it's a really good thing because like what drives the market forward is competition. For sure. And mm. clearly, where Dalcomsoft had kind of, they kind of had a monopoly. Mm. Bigots coming in, they're like, oh, no, we're just going to do our own thing because we have the funds available to do so. Uh, so now, Dalcomsoft is kind of forced to kind of innovate. You know? mm. Yeah, and this is just one of like the games um, Big Hit is making, right? There's That's the other true. ones as true. well. So We'll see what happens. Overall, Big like, Hit is doing some crazy things. I hope the video games are good because, like, you know, if they're good, I'll probably get addicted to them. Um, but, um... <laughs> Next, so we have a uh, the second topic is big hit. We're calling it big hit bonanza. So we got some big hit slash BTS related news. I made up that name. I'm sorry, everyone. Um, on November 10th, <laughs> big hit labels announced through Weverse the 2021 New Year's Eve live presented by Weverse. That's a lot of words. Um, yeah. the concert will take place on December 31st, so uh, New Year's Eve, and will be the first to include multiple big hit label artists at a single event. BTS, Newest, G Friend, TXT, and Hypen, Bumzu, and Ihyun have all been confirmed to attend. Seventeen will not be attending due to overlapping schedules. Mm. Oh. Mm. So it's like the big hit umbrella concert, essentially. Wait a wow. December thirty first. Mm hmm. Isn't that when NBC has their end of the year music show? They normally have those end of the year festivals like Gayo Dejun, Gayo yeah. Dechukje, all those things yeah are they not happening this year because of the though some some of them are happening oh. so we're going to have to see how that all plays out because one of them was traditionally mm. on new year's eve right yeah the nbc's one called coyote Zizun happens on the 31st and midway through the show they're like oh let's pause the show and ring the bell <laughs> oh, <laughs> so we'll have to see because if all of those big artists aren't there right the show might be a oh, little man. bit lacking it's a big flex yeah 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 I mean, and I think the majority of people are in K-pop are supporting BTS, right? They're the largest yeah. group. Yeah. And, you know, that means Your a audience. lot of eyes are going to be there. You know how awk it would be if 17's at the other one, though? <laughs> that is that the awk, overlapping right? schedule? <laughs> oh. <laughs> right? I don't, I don't know what the schedule is, but that'd be kind of awkward. Oh, man. Um, in other uh, big hit entertainment news, uh, they announced the teen hip-hop competition, Hit It 8 Hip-Hop Competition. So, only males born between 2002 and 2011 <laughs> can, can apply oh, individually man. or as a team. So, you could have a team of your nine-year-old and your yeah, friends. I mean, if you're crew. nine years old, uh -huh. you could have your crew and go do some rapping, yo. Oh, man. So, Aww. applications for participation can be submitted online on the official website of Big Hit Audition by the 2nd of December. B.Y. Nuxal and Milik will reportedly serve as judges throughout the competition. Oh, wow, wow. <laughs> interesting. <goodness. laughs> Do you have any comments, uh, Warren? 
Uh, I mean, I, as far as I understand, and please, Army, if I'm incorrect, please correct me, but as far as I understand, before BTS was a thing, um, Pang Siok wanted to form a hip-hop group. Mm. Um, there have mm. been a couple rappers who came out and they were like, oh, I got approached for this thing at Big Hit. Um, and then a couple years back, Big Hit had this, uh, the, the, uh, you know the video? The one... You guys don't know what I'm talking about? The high, this graduation? No, the hit it. No. No, a rebro. Sangde kitsun the jape. There's a video of Mr. Bang rapping about an audition. <laughs> oh. Um, <laughs> you guys don't know about it? It's one of I'm the greatest I'm going to have to go watch Korea. it. Yeah. yeah well, okay, I'll yeah. send you guys links afterwards. Um, That being said, um, I thought they were kind of moving on from the hip-hop market. Mm. Because that's what felt like they were doing with... TXT as well as BTS. Uh, so, but I guess not. I guess they're still in it. Here's some things. People initially were trolling and saying they're adding a rapper to hyphen. That was the initial troll. Um, oh. yeah. <laughs> proven to be false. Uh, what people do actually think this is, is they're just replenishing the rappers that they have as in their trainee system. Through this. Mm, yeah, that's Ooh. what I think as well. That's and that makes a lot likely. of sense. Yeah. Right? That makes a lot are of they, sense for future Are boys. they looking for just for rappers? Yeah, it's a, I think so. Specifically. Okay, so it should be interesting. Um, next, Big Hit is estimated to post a 190 billion Korean won in sales number, right? So that is 171 million US dollars and a 4.01 billion in operating co- profits in the third quarter alone this year. So that is around 3.6 million dollars USD. I my grammar there was terrible. I wrote this up wrong. Deal with it. All right. So this is up uh, <laughs> 22%. Uh, that is the sales and 38%. That is the operating profits, respectively, from the same period last year. Ooh. Big some money. Things, some things Ooh. that are pointing that are like obvious here, right? We're in the COVID pandemic where everything's struggle city, right? Yeah. Well. The fact that they're up 22% <laughs> in sales is nuts, right? Yeah. Yeah. Additionally, with the amount of money they're investing in things like um, B-Lift, they're building, right? Buying all these companies, they're still posting a profit after all expenses says a lot about their how um, fiscally healthy they are as a company, mm, right? Right, Very yeah. healthy. Because I think it would be fine to be like, oh, yeah, we're going to post some losses because we're investing so much money, Right. But right. the fact that they're still posting a profit is nutty to me. It, it, it's always kind of crazy because, like, every year nowadays, I'm like, oh, I wonder what news big it's gonna bring. You know, like, I wonder how much money they're gonna make. And it's always like bigger than what I expected. They mm. do like crazier things that I than I, than what I expect. Um, this I this story seems like it's like gonna keep going on, and I'm very interested to see where this goes. All right, lastly, in BTS-specific news, BTS came home big winners this year at the 2020 People's Choice Awards where they won the Group of 2020, the Album of 2020, which was Map of the Soul 7, wow. the Song of 2020, which was Dynamite, and the Music Video of 2020, which was Dynamite. Wow. Ooh. Whoa. That's a lot of big awards. Yes. People's Choice Awards. Man. Yeah. That's Th- crazy. So shout out to BTS. Wow. Congratulations. Boom. All right. Quick takes. Mnet has confirmed that BTS, Eyes One, NCT, Twice, Seventeen, GOT7, Mamamoo, TXT, and Treasure will all be attending and performing at this year's Mama, well, 2020 Mama on December 6th. Mm. More artists will probably be announced in the future. That lineup already is cray cray, mm-hmm. right? Great lineup, yeah. It seems that because obviously we're in the um, the COVID situation, right? That people are just looking for things to do. So therefore, <laughs> all the big names can come out to this, right? True. Yeah. It's essentially what it is. Um, Next, uh, one of those end of the year uh, gala things. So the 2020 KBS Gayo De Chukje will be will reportedly be held on December 18th. Mm. I don't know if that's early or not, but that seems a little early to me than when it normally is. Because I believe that one's normally held in the 20s in terms of the day. Mm. Next, EXO's Kai will be making his solo debut sometime in the future with his first mini album, Kai. See, I updated this. It's not sometime in the future. It's November 30th is when he's oh, going to be doing nice. his solo debut. So it is coming up soon. So that should be cool. Next, oh, Swing Entertainment has confirmed that Aizuan will be making their comeback on December 7th. Oh, okay. interestingly, the 7th is the day after Mama which is the Mnet Asian Music Awards. People think they're going to be performing the song on that the 6th. That makes sense. Releasing yeah. the music video the day after on the 7th. That makes that, sense. Big brain moves. They should do that. Yeah. 
Next, NCT's Resonance Part 2 will include two title track, 90s Love and Work It. 90s Love is a 90s, well, that's a big surprise, uh, (laughs) R&B hip-hop track with a neutral feel featuring members. Anita, can you read out these members? Tan, Win Win, Mark, Jeno, Hechan, Yang Yang, and Sung Chan. And Work It is an electronic dance track featuring Johnny, Yuta, Tan, again, Jongu, Henry, Jemin, and Jisung. Yep, so those are the lineups for the two NCT songs. Anita, I think you're really going to like the first one, right? I yes. Feel like that's right up your alley. <laughs> I right? hope I do. <laughs> that one really feels right up your alley. Um, all right, so the next news we're going to cover, CL has delayed the release of her upcoming album, Alpha, from November 30th to early 2021 to further improve the album. Oh, mm. cyberpunk. Yeah, she's pulling a cyberpunk here. So. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you know, hopefully, though, we get improved music because of it, right? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, if she needed to delay it this close to the actual release, something went wrong, I would assume. Mm. Um, it's a dangerous game because, like, the more you delay it, the higher the expectations. But, mm. I mean, if it's one delay to an undecided date, we'll see where this goes. I'm still excited. All right, next. A quarter four YG financial report. You know, financial reports, take them with a grain of salt, right? It's just what they're projecting. But it's stated that it is expected that Big Bang will be able to make a comeback within the first half of next year. Mm -hmm. Wow. Additionally, it seems that there are plans for YG to finally debut a new girl group in 2021. I don't know if you that. They shouldn't debut anybody right now. Boy. Yeah. Let's let's secure the home front, y'all. Right? That's how I feel about that. should just debut, too. Yeah, hmm. and and Blackpink is finally popping off as they should, right? So finally, yeah. yeah. Where's that rose solo? <laughs> Where is it, y'all? <laughs> um, all right, next, uh, Cacao M has opened audition for trainees under Cacao M Junior. They are seeking candidates born between 2006 and oh, 2010 man. to oh, audition in singing, rapping, dancing, acting, or modeling. Um, subsidiaries under Cacao M include Play M, Cracker, Starship, and more. Yeah, so they are looking for trainees. Warren, you know, let's fake your ID. You're going to go audition, and you're going to audition as a model. I, I don't... Okay, first of all, you there's a lot of things to question there. I don't think I can fake nine years of... Is that nine years? Yeah, I can't fake nine years of age difference. Mm. Um, no. I don't think I could be a model. I'm quite short. Um, <laughs> thank you for the boost of confidence. Um, <laughs> during his final trial... <laughs> do you want me to go? All right, all right. Yeah, so, the, so the last news. Uh, during the fi- during his first trial, CP Kim oh. of Mnet's audition program Idol School. I believe it's the same CP Kim from the produced stuff. Um, oh, admitted man. to manipulating the method by which votes were counted, <sighs> affecting three debut members of From Us Nine. <sighs> He claimed, quote, the cast members were ranked in a different way than was originally notified to the audience. (laughs) The text votes were supposed to be weighed 10 times the normal vote. However, there were only a few text votes and also low viewer ratings. We saw that there was a sharp rise in rankings of certain trainees as their families mobilized, um, their family specifically, their relatives, and their acquaintances to vote for their respective person. Of course, yeah. Of course. We felt that if we keep the announced method, we would lose more viewers and the program would have failed. So we weighed the online votes to be weighed five times as much as well. So let's Uh. sum up what happened. Uh. Essentially, they were like, online votes are going to count as one. Whatever the vote is, it's that. Mm -hmm. If you're in Korea and you text in with a Korean number, each vote will count as 10, right? Mm -hmm. What they realized that is that no one was watching the show, right? (laughs) And that if you were a trainee, regardless of how good you were or how popular you were, right? And you were from like a big church in Korea, right? And y'all were like, hey, praise the Lord, vote for my daughter, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you got your whole giant church to vote for your hey, daughter. Hey, she, she, would in, yeah. she would instantly jump up in the ratings and get the debut, even though she had zero oh. screen time in this, in this show, right? Right. So in order to fix that, they were like, oh, let's weigh the online vote, which is the international vote, to be five times as much to more level the playing field. Hmm. So they (laughs) screwed their own game because they were embarrassed that they were not doing a good job with making the show. I think a lot of this is BS and they just didn't like how it was turning out. So they adjusted the numbers to make it work in their favor. (sighs) 
I mean, either way, it's bad optics. You know, oh, yeah. like yeah. they they manipulated the end results of a show just because they weren't like getting the numbers they wanted. Come on, Pe- people think like, all right, I'm not gonna speculate who should have made it or not. I'm not no, I'm not gonna speculate who shouldn't have made it, right? Right. But people were saying what I was reading is that there were some trainees on that show that like it was really surprising that they didn't make it. That was what I heard. Mm. And they probably were affected by this kind of thing. Um, overall, you know, Snake Net really showing, um, you know, maybe they're the Black Mamba, right? <laughs> I don't know what I'm saying. Um, but um, comebacks and releases, Warren. Hit us with them. November 18th on Wednesday, we have Henry Lau. November 19th on Thursday, we have Bay 173 as, where, as their debut. November 20th on Friday. This is the one you've been waiting for. You have B by BTS dropping. November 23rd on Monday, we have NCT 2020, as well as the pre-release from God 7 and other confirmed release news. This is probably the shortest list I've ever seen. Um, <laughs> Kai's solo debut November 30th, Victon confirmed for December 1st, and Daya with Cheon on January. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The only Hi, way you girl. could you know, the only way you could be a model warren is if they didn't show your face, you could do a hand model job. Oh. <laughs> but um oh, you know, this is the the I, I think I talked too soon because <laughs> this is the part where I give a hot take and fuego questions with cousin Harold. Yes, yeah, uh-huh. yes, yeah, I was gonna so, say that. Right. <laughs> the, the the weekly hot take is K pop agencies shouldn't debut artists under eighteen years old. Boom. You know, uh, Harold, real quick, um I actually wanna thank you, man. Um I'm very, I, I'm, I am Bye. very confident. I'm very oh. unconfident with my hands. Um, that was a great he's confidence gone, he's booster. Gone. I love my hands now. Uh, this is very true, actually. But um, K-pop agencies shouldn't debut members, artists younger than eighteen. Boom shakalaka. What do y'all? Think? Oh, this is this is a topic that Anita really wanted to talk about. I um, did. I did. did yeah. Cousin Harold has a list of like potential topics, which you know, number she one, it to me, yeah. if you ever have a hot take or fuego question or salty statement, please email us, comment, write on the Discord, any of those things, because we're always looking for new new topics to talk about. Um, that's what Harold told me. I didn't say that. Yes. But yes. The weekly hot take is K-pop agencies shouldn't debut artists younger than eighteen. Let's let Anita give her initial impressions first. All right. Uh, well, I think I kind of wanted to, or I, I wanted Harold to to use this take uh, recently because um, with the debut of newer groups, right, we're seeing mm-hmm. uh, younger people, younger artists um, in the scene. And uh, I think not too long ago, there was also a news topic uh, that dwelled on, like, protection of underage artists and like trying to make sure that their working conditions are well um and all that stuff and i feel like it is i don't want to call it an issue but it is a topic right especially in k-pop because they are so young when they start training when they get casted um and then sometimes when they debut uh and i think my stance has changed over the years um, I think in the two, three years ago, maybe I would have said, like, of course, they shouldn't debut. They're underage. Like, there's not enough regulations for minors, maybe. But I think with the with the newer debuts and just seeing how how the talent is always going to be there. Right. And sometimes it maybe doesn't make sense to wait longer uh, to debut. Mm. I just feel like. There needs to be, um, like, instead of, like, prohibiting younger than 18, I think it should be more of a, a protections, I guess, or regulations that should come out. Anita. Yeah. Should they debut artists over 18 or not? Though? Okay, right now. I the feel, question. Yeah. yeah, I feel like right now they, they, they should, but with the condition of, also adding regulations and um, just more help to like mm-hmm. educate and make sure that they're making smart decisions because they are so young and they they're in a position where they're they're not empowered to make decisions for their person as an artist. Um, so yeah, that's that's my stance now. Go oh, Doug. I think that they should be able to 
debut artist younger than 18. Mm -hmm. Um, I did not hold this opinion, though, until the last couple of years. Um, Exactly, yeah. I look back at certain artists who were debuted extremely young, like Mm. Taemin, Boa, Boa. Ayu, One Young even more recently. Mm -hmm. They, like, really young. They children, right? Let's be straight up here. Um, I think that until recently, the industry was extremely predatory, whether we liked it or not, towards younger idols. Um, specifically with like what we used to call slave contracts and things like that back in the Mm day. Um, where these kids who were 13 were locked into like 15 year contracts right off the bat and they were essentially screwed to do whatever they want. Um, even if the groups don't make it, they were just locked into these contracts. I think with the bigger emphasis now on regulations and also the, um, emphasis now on mental health of the artist. Yeah. I am way more comfortable now, um, with debuting younger idols. By younger, I'm not meaning way younger though. Like I don't, I couldn't confidently say like I want a 15 year old to debut, but I think like 16 is like acceptable these days, personally. When you um, <laughs> mostly because I think when I was 16, although I did not have my crap together at all, right? Um, <laughs> I at least think I would have been able to function in a space where I kind of knew what I was doing, right? Mm. Um, and I think, like, at 16, like, my parents were already, like, all right, well, I have, I have nice parents, so shout out to my parents, right? <laughs> but they, they, had, they had brought in me um, to a point, right, um, right, where they allowed me to make some decisions, whether they were good or wrong, like, good or bad, right? Yeah. right and they, right. they had raised me to the point where I think I could, like, see out the different potential outcomes and realize mm. something's good or bad for me, right? But they allowed mm. me to at least have the agency to do those type of things, right? I think, therefore, like, when you're 16, I think at that point you could kind of um, make your own decisions. If we if we look at other sports, like, okay, K-pop's not a sport, but, like, the soccer world, you can have your yeah, yeah, debut yeah. match when you're 16. That's yep, considered normal. Right. They even sometimes do, like, late 15s. They, like, go through the bylaws and they're able to do that, right? Um, I think, I, I think I'm rambling on a little, but, Warren, what's your initial take on this? Uh, I think both of you guys mentioned everything I want to say. Um, <laughs> try to oh, okay. Dig the barrel about what I want. To say. I do think it's a bit of a bias um, that we think the age is getting younger and younger and younger. True. Yeah. yeah I don't that's think true. that's true at all. I, I think if you look back at groups from 2007, you know, look at April. She de- uh, Jin Zor debuted when she was 13. Oh my Kang goodness. Kang Ji Young, So Hyuna debuted 14. Oh, oh Ha Young of A Pink debuted when she was 14. Um, Sunmi in one of the girls debuted when she was 14. Uh, I, I, I think the ages haven't gotten younger. I think part, mm. parts of it is that we have gotten older. Um, yes. and we have come to realize. Yo, we such boomers, real talk. You know? <laughs> that <laughs> life is meaningless. And no. paying taxes is the point of life. Uh, and at that point, you realize, oh man, like, I don't know what I was, I was picking my nose when I was 14. I don't, like, <laughs> I couldn't be on idol, like, that kind of deal, right? Like, how will, I, I will also add, though, a big portion of the K-pop consumption audience is around that age. Yeah. Right? Mm-hmm. Like, when I'm thinking mm-hmm. about when I was 13, I was like, oh, four minutes. <laughs> you know, like, after school, let's go. Like, and, and, mm-hmm. and it's, for them, I think it's, it, it means a lot to have someone that is kind of my peer on stage perform, right? On one level, it's a level of relevancy. And on another level, it's a level of, wow, like, they're so motivated. You know, like, they're doing their thing out here. That kind of motivates me. That's kind of how I viewed it for a while, right? Like, when I realized mm-hmm. Kang Jiang was, like, I think, like, a couple of years away from me, I was like, dang, like, I want to be, like, successful, you know? Like, I miss Kang Jiang. <laughs> yeah, I don't know why I mentioned her out of, out so of all people, but um, yeah. Um, and, and that's where I'm thinking, okay. There is a lot of benefit to be had with debuting people that might be a little younger than 18. I would prefer to keep it over 15 I, or 16. Like 13. Ugh. Yeah. So I guess then, do you think it shouldn't just be younger than 18? It should be like, there should be an age minimum before you can debut? Yeah, I guess what I'm saying is I would be comfortable a little bit with... Honestly, 18 being a little lower, like the 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 line. Honestly, being a I would younger. if there was like a if they put in a bylaw that you couldn't do entertainment stuff till you were like sixteen, unless you were like mm. 
in a like let's say you're you're an actor and something and your parents are on set that's fine right 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 but like mm-hmm. doing a k-pop a k-pop stuff when your parents aren't there and what uh, whatnot right there's no guardians i would be fine with them putting a restriction that's like you can't do it until you're 16 right same and, and because and, they can't be on mm-hmm. tv anyway um yeah. until, like, <laughs> at certain times of the day anyway right, right. so and and I think this is all possible, like Doug, you mentioned, because of the regulations that are in place now, or because of yeah. the focus on mental health, because, you know, youngins aren't supposed to be on TV past 10 p.m., that kind of deal. Yeah, like, okay, go on. Yeah, like, back when that wasn't the thing, I, w- I would have been incredibly concerned, because if they, it all comes down to the environment and how we're doing it, rather than what are we doing, I think. L- Let's not sugarcoat it though. K-pop is still a bit expletive for in a yeah. lot of ways, for sure. Yeah, yes. um, it's not like a like a perfect situation, clearly. Um, but I do think there's something to the saying like you stand on the sh- um, shoulders of giants. Where the reason why we feel more comfortable now with these kids who are like 16, um, maybe late like 15, 17, debuting, mm-hmm. is because of the struggles that the past idols went through to get us to this point, right? Mm. Yeah. It's taken a lot to get here. A lot of lawsuits, a lot of crushed dreams, right? Let's be yeah. honest. Um, to, to get us to be the point where we're even comfortable with saying something like this, I think we always need to remember that because the industry, as much as we think there's problems with it now, there were so many bigger problems back in the day, I think. Um, yeah. It was ridiculous at that mm. point. I think we, it still is a little ridiculous, some of the things that happened. But I would say that the overall awareness of these problems is way wider now. And the Korean government seems to be aware of these issues and they're making efforts in that. So therefore, because of all that, I'm more comfortable with debuting artists younger than 18. Because I do think 18 is a little old. Also because of the way the trainee system is set up. Um, mm. If you yeah. can't debut, if you could only do 18, they, a lot of these companies, um, because they're allowed to, are casting kids who are like, 10 11 12 right even younger right. i think imagine Back imagine you imagine like your 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 little bro has been taking dance classes since he was five he's like 11 12 you know he's really good right he's a prodigy mm-hmm. in dancing and he they throw him into this company when he's like 11 and they're like yo bro you're gonna have to train seven years before you get in this group for sure at a minimum I mean, that seems a long time i, I, I mean I, I, my, my, I was gonna say the, my logic here would be then that it would push people to not cast as young because That's they true. wouldn't That's be true. able to debut that soon, right? Uh, I mm-hmm. know it might, it might not stop everyone, but I'm saying like you you wouldn't voluntarily go into a company knowing that yo I'm gonna be waiting like five years before I can mm, actually right. be of age to be in a group. So like I see the good and the bad um, with having like a minimum age requirement. Uh, I guess. I was thinking back to what Warren was saying about the general audience, like the main audience and how you want to be relevant in that age group. Um, Yes, I agree with that. But there's also the caveat of knowing that, yeah, they might be the like they might be like the primary audience you're shooting for. And it makes sense. But there's also you can't guarantee that that's who's viewing your artist. Right. So like people that are much older are also going to be. Uh, watching this group of uh, this underage person and they're gonna be in a in a realm right the media where they're not that age group for majority of the time like the producers the managers the people that are working behind the scenes are not underage they're adults right. uh, so I feel like I don't know I, I get it like yes that's that's what you're trying to shoot for to connect with your audience but it, uh, uh, I, yeah. I mean, all, all I'm thinking is like if you look at shows like Spongebob you know like yes. <laughs> cartoons like they're yeah, inherently yeah, yeah. Uh, sure you, you you still enjoy them as a 25 year old but at the same time they're not they weren't originally created for a 25 year old you, do, right. you, can, do you kind of get what I'm saying like it's yeah, yeah, I think, yeah. yeah I, I think it's fine for us to and adults for an older audience to be able to enjoy them I, but at the yeah, same time yeah. If they're marketed in a way that is inappropriate for that age, that's a completely different problem. That is like Mm. a whole issue in terms of ethics and how we deal uh, with people who are underage. That that's just kind of fucked up in a different way. Um, Mm -hmm. But I I, I do see your point, though. Um, What I was gonna say earlier, real quick, um, uh, was regarding something Doug said, but I forgot. So sorry about. 
what is like the training about? period. Yes, yes. Like... I feel like the, I I feel like the training period has gotten shorter the last the, like, over True. the last couple. I've of weeks, noticed that right? too. Yeah. Because yeah. mm-hmm. like I remember girls' generation coming out and saying like they've like trained for like five years or so, and like nowadays when yeah. I see a group, they are like mostly like I know for Rocket Punch, right? Aside from Jury, who you know kind of joined late, their all their training experience has been like one or two years. Mm, yeah. Yeah. That's true. So there you go. Yeah. Um. I guess that this question, if you asked us when we started the pod, we might get different answers because yeah. even Honestly, when, yeah. even like two years ago, mental health was not considered that big of a, a deal in K-pop. Like clearly, we do some people are mentally struggling, but the amount of effort done to help these idols was clearly not as big as it is now, right? Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, to cl- to clarify just a little bit, I would still be uncomfortable if certain companies do it. I would be more comfortable if certain companies do it. Like, like there have management? been... Management? Mm. Right, right. Depending on the management, I've... There was... What was that one group uh, that uh, we... No, no. Um, They debuted right after Rocket Punch. They had a song about Cherry? the weekdays. Not Cherry, Cherry? Bullet. No, no, no. No, 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 no. It's the, uh, what's the one with the uh, kid from Doha. Ah, ah, yes. I know who yes. you're talking about. They had a weird, they had a very bad controversy where their manager uh, yeah. were like, yeah, you guys know what I'm talking about. Or with companies yes. like that, where they're not willing to play along and like create right. a good the, the environment quick, the, for that. The quick TLDR of what he's trying to say was that there was an incident where the, some of the staff members were saying, why aren't you so showing enough skin to young children on yeah. in their group? Mm. And it was not a good look. So No, yeah. no, no, not, not at all. Look. I guess well, what Warren's yeah. trying to say is that it's Sir. only okay because we create the scenario and the situation that is well suited for the situation. If you're not going to do that, don't do that. Right. But I feel like, I think uh, my mentality has changed now because I feel like the the institution, right? The group uh-huh. that can make that legislation and that regulation for everyone, right? So everybody uh-huh. has to follow would be the government. Uh, right. So I feel like... It, it's not perfect now um and hopefully there's more like improvements to make sure that there's like very specific laws protecting minors and specifically people right. in the music industry uh but i think it seems to be going that way where like i'm not as concerned as i could have been right, five years ago right so yeah i think we're going in the right direction yeah okay um so i think that wraps up this uh Hot take for this week. Let us know what you think if K-pop agencies should or should not debut artists younger than 18 in their groups. Boom. All right, State of the Nation. Uh, What have I been doing in the world of K-pop? I didn't prep anything this week. <laughs> oh, no. Douglas didn't do his homework. Uh, I mean, I don't know. Just kind of say what I've been doing. Um, What have you see. been doing? Have you played Genshin? Yeah, there's an update, so that's what's been oh, using up a lot of my time. Oh. Um, additionally, our Minju card company kind of popped off. We have 240 employees or something. That's wow. a little bit more stressful than I would like, to be honest. Um, oh, no. Overall, though, in terms of K-pop, the groups I like right now. Um, mm-hmm. I've been watching lots of Luna content, because they oh. make good content. Uh, like, the funny stuffs that happen. They're just funny. Hmm. Um... Starting to get hyped for Eyes One again because you know nice. they're coming back. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I've been watching a ton of Dream Capture. I'm listening to a ton of Dream Catcher as well. Really into them lately. Um, Have they be capturing your dreams. No, <laughs> I wouldn't go that far, but I see what you did there. Um, lastly, I've been scrounging up all available content for that Stacy group because there ain't much of it out there. But I'm getting hype. You know? Wow! 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 wow. Yeah, I'm. The, I'm really like I said before. It's like Stan or not Stan. Who knows? Maybe I'll stay and see, you know? <laughs> Boom. Wow. So fast. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. What about you, Anita? <laughs> <laughs> well, um, recently I've been doing or checking out some films. Um, so that not directly related to K-pop, but uh, well, one kind of. I haven't seen it yet. But the first one that I've seen so far is called House of Hummingbird. And it's a pretty recent film. I think it came out earlier this year. Um, and it's set in the 90s, uh, 1994 to be specific. 
And it kind of follows the life of a 14-year-old girl and kind of, it, it to me, it feels more like a, a snapshot of like what life would have been like for someone that age at that time, like the struggles, like uh, what you would deal with. Mm. Um, and it felt very nostalgic. I think it's one of those uh, kind of films where it feels like it's it's kind of building very slowly. It doesn't have like a very huge like conflict that is very obvious but there's this sense of nostalgia that kind of follows the whole film um definitely check it out if you're interested in that sort of thing they also talk about this very specific event that happened in 1994 um so i don't want to ruin it but if you're a history buff maybe you would know um specifically in south korea uh but yeah I've been I've been watching that and uh, another movie that I have yet to watch, but I've it's been on my radar because the OST or a, a song featured in the in the film I'm not sure by Sesonyeon, which is like an indie band from Korea. It's called uh, Winter, the song or Noon, and they featured it in this movie called Moonlit Winter. I don't know what the Korean title is but it's it's a very interesting film i just saw like the trailer that featured the song and there seems to be a little bit of uh uh i want to say it's like subtly lgbtq theme in there so i'm gonna check that out uh this week hopefully and yeah that's pretty much it okay anita um, I, yeah something I'll, broke I'll, out I'll, I'll, I'll be honest with you I've been distracted at what you're saying. Massive news <laughs> broke while you were oh talking. We gotta talk about this real quick. We gotta talk about this real quick. Yeah. The Seoul court revealed which specific Produce 101 trainees were kicked out by On through the vote rigging. Oh, they dropped the names. My goodness, they did specifically. They did it. They pulled All that right. trigger. Let's just go through this. Uh, Warren sacrificing. So shout out to Warren. He's gonna sacrifice the state of the nation time. Oh. Oh. Oh, do you not want to? Oh, I, I was still gonna mention some stuff at the end. All right, go we, first then. No, we can talk about this real quick. All right, because this is kind of massive. Um, I didn't think they would do this, to be honest. No. All right, I season they would one. Not name. Uh, Soo Hyun, the girl who placed, I want to say, thirty fifth. So she was the last one to make it to for top thirty five. Mm -hmm. Last one to make it for top twenty. So Soo Hyun, and someone named So Hey Lin. I don't really remember her. Season two, Hyunwoo yeah. and Dongho. Um, season uh, oh, PD forty eight. This is the big one for me. Yeah. Han Cho Won and Gaon. <laughs> wow, it's confirmed. And oh, then uh, no. produce X one hundred one. You remember that guy Timothy, the French Korean kid? Yeah. Um, Gook Hyun, who was the one who was um, what group was he in? I think he was Gook Hyun was in a specific group. Um, he's the one who got injured halfway through. Um, oh, yeah, 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 yeah. I remember. Yeah. Lee Jin Woo, Henami, Gu Jung Mo, oh. Jin Hyuk, Dong Hyun. Oh. These names. I, even I remember oh them. I have not seen the show. Wow. They specifically announced, like, which kids got rigged out of the show. See? Okay. Okay. So, Kalen drops nine rankings from 5th to 14th. That made no sense to me yeah, at all. Yeah. That was a big shocker. That's wow. kind of crazy. Man, okay. Well, I, I will say it is kind of shocking that they mentioned actual names. Yeah. I didn't think that would happen because that's obviously going to cause, like, huge impact. I think the, like, we, okay, let's be real here. Um, The first two seasons, of course, there was manipulation, but those don't feel as recent or as big. Mm -hmm. It was around 48 and X101 when we realized things didn't really line up all that well. Specifically starting with Produce 48. Some things just didn't make sense with the way the final lineups turned out, there I would say. There were random drops and random rises that mm. no, nobody expected. And for Cho Won, and specific, I think Gaon was the biggest omission. Everyone, yeah. even back then, before we didn't know any of this stuff, we were all saying, something's not right here. Right? Like, it right. just yeah. doesn't make sense for her to have not made it. Um, yeah, real quick, yeah, Miu dropped 13. Yeah. M yeah. Remember, remember, Miu, she dropped 11. Miru dropped 12. Miu dropped 8. Like, like That was the day when we only ended up with three Japanese kids, even though the um final 12 going in was had a lot more Japanese kids right. in it. Right? Yeah. 
And then when Gaon, I remember we were watching that show, that finale, and at a mm. certain point, we're like, there's more kids than spots. Right? <laughs> that was the the what we came down to. And we're like, there's a problem here. Um, and then some of these kids, even from Produce X101, Jin Hyuk is the most notable one. Everyone yeah. was like, he yes. got rigged out of the show. They even <laughs> called them the Gaon of that season. That was like yeah. his, his name. And Gu Jung Mo was really close to. I remember... Um, Man, so if Man. you want to look up all the trainees who were kicked out, you could look them up, reminisce about the these kids who almost made it. This has big implications on a lot of things because I never thought that I thought it was one of those situations where because they didn't release the names, they were in damage control mode, right? Because right. until you could point that specifically who was supposed to make it or who was supposed to not make it, it's all speculative, right? Yeah. Mm. But the fact that we essentially now know who was supposed to make it is going to make everyone talk about this a lot more for the next couple of weeks. It's not over yet. No. I, I also want to add, please don't point your fingers towards the members who are oh, already yeah. in the groups. Um, yeah. Not one, one group. Um, right. They, I, right. Nothing's come out that they were saying that they were actually involved in the um, fraud process. You know, like... Because I like I've already seen like people like pointing fingers towards specific members of specific groups. Mm. Don't do that. Don't be that guy. We, we always say this. Don't be that one poo-poo person on the internet. Yeah. Overall, though, <laughs> I can't believe they released the names. Like, I didn't I think they would do it. I'm con- I'm concerned now as a Wiz one because obviously, um, the Eyes One group is the only one that's still active out of all the oh, the yes. ones affected by this because X One disbanded. Obviously, hmm. this has implications clearly, right? Yeah. Oh, man. We'll have to see what happens, but that was the breaking news segment this week. Warren, <laughs> what have you been doing this week? <laughs> I don't think I can beat that, but uh, that I would go. So, um, if you've been enjoying that Agmu song as much as I have, um, worry not, because I have two, uh, just, I have qu- two quick song suggestions that you might want to check out. Um, and one's been charting really well. Uh, it's from a guy called Chang Bom Jun. You guys remember who that is? Yes. Chang Bom Jun. Tangbom He's the uh, main singer of originally Busker Busker, correct? Right, ah, right. ah, yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah. Uh, he has a song out called Can't Sleep, and it, it is the perfect wow. mix of being sad, uh, feeling lonely, uh, and then feeling like a creepy old man. Um, uh-huh. all, all, all into <laughs> one song. It's, 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 it's like one of those songs that are like... Um, you're long you you this is like a one-sided love kind of deal like you like oh, this person yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and as the song progresses it's, it might be because of the lyrics but it gets a little creepy in the end like a little oh, bit, a little bit like a tad bit not scary or anything um well that's that um the other thing i want to shout out is tanabi uh Yay. they dropped a quick ep uh a couple days ago uh oh, oh, actually over a week ago great group of songs probably mm. one of the most notable bands to come out of korea in the, yes. in the past like yeah. three or so yeah. years if you're not listening to them you i don't know what you're doing you're missing out on a huge <laughs> part of k-pop this is like those two are incredible big pieces of the fall uh catalog of songs if you will so please 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 do me a favor just you know try listening to it once because you there's a whole world out there that is a part of k-pop that you probably haven't seen and it's great it's wonderful Mm. Um, so yeah there you go I, I'm i sorry I'm still processing <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry dude <laughs> god dang um, I can't believe that happened the aftermath um, uh, what's oh gonna my now? goodness I'm like googling these kids trying to remember who they were oh Dong Ho's back, back home from New West yeah, yeah. oh yeah. Jesus Christ alright <laughs> oh yes. my goodness this is crazy town now I don't. We don't know if these are all like the finale rankings because some of these kids got eliminated along the way. So mm. I think, like specifically, uh, Hyunwoo got eliminated before the finale, right? Or someone like Timothy got eliminated early. Mm-hmm. So there, these are like levels to this. It's not just the finale. So because there's um one, two, three, four, five, six, like six or seven names listed for produce X one hundred and one, that doesn't mean seven kids should have made X one, right? No, it's no, just no, saying no. that seven kids got screwed over by On during the process of the show. But specifically, Cho Won and Gaon got eliminated at the end at the finale, which means that they should have been in it, is essentially what they're saying. Yeah, they yeah. were almost there. They're almost there. 
Dang. Actually, we don't know that. Maybe it just means their place was different, but I don't know if that affected it. But potentially, and I would say most likely, it means that they should have made the final lineup. Th- that's what there it was manipulation on them. That's yeah. a this is this is crazy. Oh my goodness. Um, I, I I thought season one and two were out of question. Like I, no no, all not. of it was manipulated at various yeah. degrees. But like Bego, that means he probably should have made one on one. I think because I think he was at the finale. <laughs> Does it yeah. say anything about about Tung Hyun or Jr? Is that what he went by? Oh, yeah, he that's was kind of weird. He yeah. started that that the trend. trend of like Jr. from New <laughs> started leader. the trend. We yeah. went Jr. Gone yeah. and then Jin Hyuk. I guess Jr. didn't get manipulated out of the show. Oh, Dang. that's kind of crazy. Um, yep. One one but, thing, it it does look like the judge has uh, told them not never to reveal. Who has been manipulated into the groups? Um, you mean oh, into the groups? Okay, right, right. Yeah. Uh, mm. So do me a, again. I'm gonna emphasize this again. Do me a favor. Don't point your fingers to the wrong people. Yeah, please. yeah. yeah. I was if you didn't do anything wrong. As my dad always say, if you assume things, you make an ass out of you and me. But um, <laughs> <laughs> what? oh, that's, that's you in s- a couple of seconds. That's how you out. spell assume. Yeah, yeah. Right. but um, right. This has been Soju Talk, your weekly shot of K-pop. We had a lot of music. We had breaking news at the end. Oh, uh, yeah. A little, little chaos, you know. A, a little, <laughs> the scenes were kind of crazy towards the end. Um, if you think the scenes are crazy today, you know we gotta cover BTS NCT Got Seven. It's crazier. All, all next week, so it's gonna get even crazier. Um, I'm Doug though. I like to thank Warren Anita for joining me. If you're still with us this long, you know, shout out to the nation. Shout out to you. You make me feel special. I don't know. Um, we'll see you guys next week, everyone. Bye. Bye bye. <laughs>